For the first time in 2023, Buckeye Nation will get a first-hand glimpse at what next season's Buckeyes will look like. I'm Casey Smith, joined by Megan Hustline and Nick Malika. And the big question everybody has heading into this Saturday, Megan, who is going to succeed C.J. Stroud? Well, I don't think we're going to find out this Saturday. Uh, we found out that Devin Brown is going to be out. He won't be playing because he had a procedure done on his finger. So it's a little disappointing we won't get to see him on the field. Um, but we will get to see Kyle McCord, who in many people's eyes, is the, he's going to be the starter. And he's, in my eyes, the starter as well. Just with the three years of experience he's had, um, you know, he played in 2021 with C.J. Stroud. He played with Marvin Harrison Jr. in high school. They won a few state championships together. So that's going to be a powerful duo, and that's experience that, you know, Devin Brown doesn't have. So I think just all these factors combined with the fact that um, McCord's going to have that extra playing time that Brown's going to be out with this injury. Probably not going to be a ton of time, but still, every minute counts. So I think McCord's going to get the start. Exactly. This is a really really big opportunity for Kyle McCord. Devin Brown, Ryan Day said he'll have a full summer, but obviously this is a setback. Um, minor bump in the road, as he said on Twitter uh, earlier this week. And kind of like Megan alluded to, Nick, no matter what, who the quarterback is, whether or not who they're throwing to, one constant remains, Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, what are you looking forward to uh, for him this year? And it feels like if he's not getting 10 catches a game, something's going wrong with that Buckeyes offense. Oh yeah, definitely for sure. I mean. He just he's just a playmaker. That's all it is to it. You know, he makes the plays when it counts, and he, they they get him when he needs him. So, I think he just got to keep playing his game. You know, he'll, he'll get the looks. He's gonna get open. He's a great route runner as well, and he knows how to catch the ball at any at any circumstance. So, I know he'll just stick to his game plan and keep going. And it's kind of funny um, with the coaches clinic kind of going on this week. Uh, Jim Trestle, John Cooper, Irv Meyer, they're all in town uh, having this coaches clinic with Ryan Day, and they were talking about Brian Hartline being the offensive coordinator and sort of calling plays and whatnot, Jim Trestle said he might be throwing the ball every single play. And so, I mean, is that sort of a potential new look offense for Ohio State? I know they have sort of five running backs mm -hmm. at their disposal once Evan Pryor comes back from injury, but do you think like Saturday we should see a little bit more of that air raid type offense? It's going to be interesting. I don't think it's going to be a totally new offense. Um, we also won't get to see fully what this offense is. You know, like you mentioned, we have a ton of injuries, especially in the running back room. Um, Abuka and Fleming are injured in the receiving room. So we're just going to see kind of the depth that our receiving room has. You know, we'll get to see some of the freshmen that we've been looking forward to seeing, five-star Carnell Tate that everyone's been hyped up to see. So. I think we'll just mainly focus on the depth and see what the young guys can do. Yeah, for sure. And Nick, who are two guys that you're looking to uh, this Saturday, potentially under the radar, potentially not? Who are people, who should people keep an eye on this Saturday? So I'm actually going to jump to the center uh, at Carson Hisman, who's a sophomore. Uh, I think that, you know, he's going to have to make himself really known, you know, to get that starting center position. Another person I'm looking at is Sonny uh, Stiles, another sophomore uh, bandit safety. Uh, really, really good recruit coming through and I think that he has to get, make his name heard and that's how you know he'll beat out the older safeties in there. Right, you talk about Carson Hensman, I mean just right there in the center trying to replace Luke Whipler is no easy task, um, but him and Vic Cutler are going at it in spring right now in that uh, center position battle. Obviously Jacob James, once he returns from injury, his name will be thrown uh, in that ring as well. And as you mentioned, Sonny Styles, like if you want a prototypical safety I feel like Sonny Styles is it, just with his size, physicality, and ability to just fly around and make plays. You saw it, uh, he's a Pickerington, Ohio native. So, I mean, Columbus is really familiar with Sonny Styles, and they'll be able to see uh, just what he can do. And I think this Saturday sort of started, he got on the field a little bit last mm -hmm. year in more of a limited role. Uh, but Jim Noble said, no matter what, it's his job to find uh, sort of a spot on the field for Sonny Styles. But Megan, Sort of transitioning now to you, who are two guys that you're looking for uh, this Saturday in the spring game? Yeah, so I have two guys on defense that I'm looking at. The first one being Jack Sawyer. Uh, he played in that Jack role last year, kind of a disappointing season um, after his freshman year, you know, trying to play linebacker in the end. It didn't really work out for him, so now he's back in his home of defensive end and playing alongside JT Tuimolowell. I think it's going to be a lethal duo this season, so I'm really excited for that. And I'm also looking forward to seeing Denzel Burke's comeback season. Great freshman year, one of the best in the country, and then just struggling with injuries last year, couldn't stay healthy, couldn't play to his full potential. So now he's had a great spring. He said he's fully healthy. So I'm excited to see what he can do. Right. I, 
I mean, just on my end, I'm really looking forward to seeing Carnell Tate and Jelani mm -hmm. Thurman, just two sheer offensive weapons that in, in no time, I think they'll be big parts of this Ohio State offense. Obviously, Cade Stover is going to be taking most of the snaps at tight end. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no question about that. Joe Royer right behind him. And Carnell Tate, it's sort of like sort of this recurring conversation where every single year it feels like, oh, what's Ohio State going to do with all these receivers that they have mm -hmm. at their disposal? It almost feels like a backlog. But I think Brian Hartline said they're probably six or seven deep right now. I wouldn't be shocked if Carnell Tate kind of gets some of those opportunities, especially in sort of those blowout type games, uh, potentially even game one against Indiana when they go on the road. Um, obviously going on the road with a new quarterback is no easy thing, um, but you might see Carnell Tate in that game. And he's one guy that Buckeye Nation should keep an eye on. But for now, uh, the spring game this Saturday, we'll have all the coverage for you at Lantern Sports. Uh, for Megan Hustline and Nick Malika, I'm Casey Smith. Until next time, take care.